Welcome to biologyexamsorry.com. Today we are going to discuss about viruses, structure classification and symmetry in detail. In this presentation we will be discussing about are viruses living or not, justifications for both living or dead. What are viruses? Classification of viruses according to International Committee of Virus Viral Nomenclature. Classification based on viral symmetry different types of viral genome, what's a capsid and what's an envelope. And we'll be discussing this within five to six minutes. The first question, viruses, is it living or dead? And this is a debate that is going on for a long time and many believe that viruses are living and die this. Why it is considered as dead? The justifications are, it is not cellular. According to cell theory, all organisms are made up of cells. Viruses are not cellular. It can be considered as a subcellular particle. Secondly, it doesn't have any metabolism. It is just chemical packets outside the host nucleic acid that is surrounded by a protein coat. It cannot grow, it cannot be cultured, it can be crystallized just like sugar. So these are the reasons why it is considered as dead. Why it is considered as alive? It has genes and it, is cap it has proteins and it can multiply inside the host. And it can evolve through natural selection and mutation. It's very difficult to devise an antiviral drug as the genome is very simple, it is very easy to mutate. It behaves as an intracellular applicate parasites. Now many believe that this is a correct definition for viruses. There is a stimulus, it can respond to chemicals, heat and radiations and it is capable of transmitting from one infected host to another thereby moving from one host to another and causing diseases. So therefore majority of scientists today believe that viruses are living or they are actually subcellular particles that is exhibiting many characters of life. Now moving into viruses. Viruses are intracellular infectious obligate parasites or strict parasites. Consisting of nucleic acid, it can be either RNA or DNA that is enclosed by a protein cord. This is a nucleic acid and this is a protein cord. Nucleic acid plus protein cord, it can be called as a nucleocapsid. In some cases, there is an outer membrane which is called as an envelope. The size of smallest virus is approximately 20 nanometer like polio virus and larger viruses uh, may be approximately 300 nanometer like smallpox virus, mimi virus, etc. An intact infectious viral particle with nucleocapsid that is present outside, it is called as virions. Then classification of viruses. Viruses are classified based on the presence or absence of viruses as enveloped and non-enveloped viruses. Enveloped viruses like influenza virus, HIV, whereas non enveloped virus like adenovirus. Based on genome, it is classified as DNA viruses and RNA viruses. And based on strands of nucleic acid, it is further divided into single stranded or double stranded DNA viruses and also single stranded or double stranded RNA viruses. Now moving into viral symmetry. Symmetry is the nature of packaging of protein subunits or capsid orientation. It can be spiral, helical. Protein subunits are packed in closed cylindrical pattern. This is a TMV or tobacco mosaic virus, the first identified virus and the first crystallized virus. Here there is an axial hole and the capsid is arranged helically. That's why it is called as helical virus. Then cubical or icosahedral where proteins or capsids are arranged in hexagonal subunits may be five-sided or six-sided. This is an adenovirus. You can see the capsid coat. It is six-sided hexagonal units. And binal, this is a combination of both spiral and cubical symmetry. It is seen in some T phages. And finally, the complex symmetry it cannot be considered as purely helical, purely icosahedral, but with some extra structures. This is in the case of bacteriophages. You can see the head region. This is like icosahedral, whereas the tail region, this is somewhat helical. And there are some other structures like collar, tail, tail fibers, etc. That's why the symmetry is called as a complex symmetry. Now this is a cartoon picture of TMV, adenovirus, influenza virus, bacteriophage, etc. And these are the original electron micrographs. Now about the viral genome. Viral genome, it can be double or single stranded DNA or RNA. It, is, it may be linear or circular. Depending on its type of nucleic acid, a virus can be called as a DNA virus or an RNA virus. It contains genes for capsid synthesis or protein code synthesis. Very few genes that is essential for successful multiplication inside the host. The genome size is very small. The genome size is 2 kilobase pairs in circovirus up to 1.2 megabase pairs in mimivirus which is one of the largest viruses. 
Then about the capsid. Capsid is a cord that surrounds the genetic material. It differs in size, shape and symmetry or the capsid determines the symmetry of the virus. Individual units are called as capsomeres or capsids are made up of individual units called capsomeres. Capsid proteins are encoded by the viral genome as that is the most essential protein of the virus as it protects the genetic material. The functions of capsid includes it protects the genetic material from nucleus degradation whenever there is a free DNA or RNA that is roaming in a cell system the cell will degrade it by nucleus activity. So capsid protects the degradation of nucleic acid helps in introduction of viral genome into the host cell by attachment and also injection of viral genome and also it determines the antigenic specificity of viruses as this is in contact with the host host will detect or recognize this recognize different types of viruses based on the structure of the capsid or nature or antigenic property of the capsid now moving into envelope in some viruses apart from capsid there is an outer cord which is called as envelope which is made up of proteins or rarely glycoproteins it is often a modified host plasma membrane as in the case of HIV. There are certain projections on the surface of the envelope which is called as peplomers or spikes that helps in attachment during infection. HIV virus uses its spikes for attachment to the host. And that is it. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com. Thank you so much for your support.